What's going on, guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS, bringing you the Week 10 CWO Premier League-wide recap. Guys, only one week left in the regular season until we get into the playoffs. It is literally coming down to the wire for so many clans, more so the wild cards. A lot of clans have already clinched a playoff berth. Uh, I will go ahead and let you guys know who they are when we cover the standings. As always, we will go ahead and check out all the highlighted wars. And if you guys uh, watch until the very end of the video, we will go ahead and check out a closer look at the playoff projections, the playoff picture. Like I said, it is very, very tight for a lot of these four and six, uh, these, you know, these uh, five and five clans. Uh, very, very close for a lot of them. Again, we'll go ahead and start off with the Dragon Division. Gunma Samurai clearly clinching a playoff berth. Uh, they are 9-1 on the season. Uh, so congratulations to them uh, for making it into the playoffs. Uh, their, inaugural, uh, their inaugural season in Premier. Congratulations to them. Grumpy Old Men sitting at 7-3, and three, getting a huge victory over From Molten Lava. I do have replays to show you guys from that war if you stick around. They have also clinched a playoff berth. Reddit Viper sitting at 4-6, and six, going to be very, very tight. It is a must-win war for them in Week 11. Plus, quite a few clans have to leave in order for them to clinch a playoff berth. But it's going to be very, very close. They have been red hot uh, these last few weeks here in Premier, and Valar Mugulis is in fourth place, sitting at one in nine, uh, and they also took a loss uh, this year. They are not going to be making it to the playoffs, but they have been hanging in there and have putting have been putting up some very good numbers, specifically 10 v 10 numbers, so best of luck to them going forward in the next CWL season. Okay, guys, P.E.K.K.A. Division, for High uh, for High Seleke, sitting at 8 and 2, they are going to be going to the playoffs. They have clinched the P.E.K.K.A. Division. Dragon Rejects right now sitting at the bottom seed right now in Premier. Uh, they were granted an automatic win uh, as the clan that they were going to be facing uh, did drop out. Uh, but Dragon Rejects also has a must-win war on their hands in Week 11 if they want to make it to the playoffs. Uh, we have North Awaken sitting at 4-6. and six. They are in third place in the P.E.K.K.A. Division. And we have Kornfeld sitting at 3-7 and seven in fourth place. So best of luck uh, to them going into the next CWL season. Uh, they have put up a hell of a fight. A couple close wars did not quite go their way. Uh, but again, best of luck. And I hope they finish the season strong in week 11. Baby Dragon Division, we have Swarm Synergy also sitting at 9-1. Again, the only two clans left uh, with only one loss. Gunma Samurai and the second one is Swarm Synergy. They are going to be going, going to the playoffs and they are the first seed... Uh, in the breakdown for who's going to be going to the playoffs. So huge shout out to Swarm Synergy. They also won uh, here in week 10. Uh, they took down COC Hogwarts. Do have some action if you guys stick around for the highlighted wars. Go to Borks Krieg is sitting at 5-5. Five and five, Also a must war win on their hands going into week 11. Uh, they are in second place. We have Assassin's Corps sitting at 3-7. and seven. They also had a huge victory over none other than Dark Looter X. Uh, so they have strung a couple wins together uh, here towards the end of the season. Uh, they will not be going to the playoffs, but they have been putting up a hell of a fight uh, also a lot of close wars that just didn't quite go their way best of luck to them in the future and we have BD unbeatables in fourth place they are sitting at one in nine best of luck to them also uh, going into week 11 and into the future uh, unfortunately assassin's Corps and BD unbeatables will not be going to the playoffs here in season three okay guys in the minor division like I've been saying throughout uh, I mean from the very beginning uh, starting covering uh, the Premier coverage. Minor division, the most competitive division in all of Premier here in Season 3. All four of these clans could potentially, very, very likely, that all four of these clans are going to be going to the playoffs. That is absolutely huge uh, for, uh, I mean, for Forbidden, 8-2. and two. 
also had an incredible victory over War Addicts. Uh, they have uh, clinched in my division clearly. And check this out, guys. One Hive Genesis, Dark Avengers, and Nottingham have been fighting tooth and nail side by side the entire season. Look at that. Six and four. I mean, cannot believe how textbook perfect this is. Uh, Clearly going to be very, very tight. Must win. I mean, all these clans are going to be looking to win. We do have all inner division matchups uh, going down. So what you guys see right here, a couple of these clans are going to be seven and three. A couple of these clans are going to be six and five. Going to be very, very tight going into week 11. Cannot wait to see how it pans out. But there is a high uh, possibility that all four of these clans in the minor division could be going to the playoffs stay tuned to find out what exactly is going to happen now we'll go ahead and check out the next four divisions all right guys these are the next four divisions that we're going to be covering the wall breaker balloon wizard and going to be ending on the healer division again starting off with the wall breaker division check it out guys uh fysb seven in three you want to talk about a clan that a lot of people were saying is not going to be making it. FYSB's washed up. What has happened to this clan? They've had five dip fails. They have squashed everything that anybody has said about FYSB. Again, sitting at seven and three, they have been winning back to back to back wars. And of course, uh, they also won. They took down Nottingham uh, here in week 10. They have also clinched uh, the first place spot in the wall breaker division. They are going to be going to the playoffs. We have War Addicts sitting at five and five who has unfortunately dropped out. Not sure exactly what happened. Uh, they did take a loss to Forbidden uh, here in week 10. They were sitting at five and five, tied for second place uh, in the wall breaker division. They have announced that they have bowed out. Again, not exactly sure what happened there, but best of luck to them going uh, possibly into the next CWL season. Best of luck to them. And they have been a remarkable clan here in season three. But we have Emphatic Fury. Uh, they are sitting at five and five also. Uh, they did suffer a loss against a uh, one hive genesis in what was a very very close war again stay tuned to the highlight war uh section or part or whatever you want to call it uh right after the standings i do have uh some replays to show you guys from that war very very close war uh came down to one star but emphatic fury still in the running for the playoffs but they have to get a victory uh if they want to see a playoff berth in week 11 Unius Exercitus has also dropped out. I'm sure you guys, as you guys have seen, that I've been following along. Uh, back in week, what is it? Back in week nine, uh, they went ahead and bowed out. Best of luck uh, again going to them. Balloon Division, bad intentions, sitting at seven and three. Uh, gonna be very, very, gonna be very, very close. They have also clinched a playoff berth. Uh, but we have Dark Looter X sitting right behind them at six and four. So, Bad Intentions is going to be taking on uh, Dark Looter X. So, in the event that Dark Looter X beats Bad Intentions, uh, that would make Dark Looter X leading in first place, even though that would bring them, uh, they would have the same record, but by Dark Looter X beating Bad Intentions, that would potentially put Dark Looter X in first place in the Balloon Division. Definitely stay tuned uh, for uh, that war. Going to be very, very close. Best of luck to both of them uh, going into that heavy hitter showdown in Week 11. Uh, we have COC Hog Wars. They are at three and seven. And we have Axie Something who did pick up their very first victory, uh, here in week 10. Uh, big congratulations to them. They have been sticking it out. Uh, they, they were 0 and 9 going into week 10, but they did pick up their first victory. Uh, they're obviously not going to be going to the playoffs here in season three, uh, but best of luck to uh, COC Hog Wars and Axie Something, uh, going into the future. If they, if they end up getting back into CWL, uh, best of luck to both of them. Okay, guys, Wizard Division. We have Above and Beyond and CWC Brawlers duking it out for first place. They are both tied for six and four. It appears that they have both clinched a playoff berth. 
Uh, but a couple things can happen, but still going to be very, very tight. Uh, bet, so best of luck to both of these clans uh, going into week 11 uh, this coming weekend. Uh, we have Power COC, uh, who did pick up a victory. They also have a must-win war on their hands in week 11. Like I said, guys, it is very, very close for a lot of these clans. I cannot wait to see what happens in week 11. And of course, we have Meet the Kings who dropped out uh, pretty far back into the season. Uh, again, best of luck in the future uh, to Meet the Kings. But they are in fourth place in the Wizard Division, uh, rounding out the bottom. Okay, guys. Healer Division, congratulations to King Jeffrey sitting at a solid 8-2. They have just been winning what seems to be nonstop. Uh, I mean, eight and two going to the playoffs again. Congratulations from Molten Lava and Art of War, both tied right now at five and five. Uh, from Molten Lava did beat them a few wars back or, or a few weeks back, so they are technically ahead of Art of War, even though they have the same record. Uh, from Molten Lava has an absolute, an absolute must war win on their hands as they are facing Gahazi Bomber. Uh, two, they are sitting at four and six right now. Uh, if From Molten Lava beats Gahazi Bomber 2, FML will be going to the playoffs again. A must war win, uh, a must win war on their hands. Same thing for Gahazi Bomber 2. If they want to see, uh, if they want to clinch a playoff berth, even though they are at four and six right now on the season, by taking down FML, and if Art of War loses, uh, if King Jeffrey beats Art of War, Gahazi Bomber 2 could potentially be going to the playoffs. Going to be very, very tight. Okay, guys, that's going to wrap up the standings and a little, a little glimpse into the playoffs. Again, we will cover a little bit of it at the end of the video. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and check out the action from all of the highlighted wars here in Week 10. All right, guys, here we go. The highlighted wars. We do have nine to get through. Uh, like I said, there was a lot of action, uh, like it seems to be every single week. Some incredible wars that went down. Uh, we'll go ahead and start off with Bad Intentions, who took on Gotoborg's Kriega. Bad Intentions getting a five-star victory, the final 85 to 80. Bad Intentions have been looking very, very solid, and they put up some very good numbers. Uh, here in week 10, uh, they did have three 10v10 triples and they did manage, uh, what seems to be one of the most important stats to get nailed down is the 10v11. And that is exactly what they did. They did go four for 10. So they did manage to clear all of Gotoborg's Krieger's Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s. Uh, definitely giving clans the edge, uh, when you get these 11s doubled with those Town Hall 10s. Uh, they did have two dip fills. They did go six for eight. Uh, not the end of the world, considering that they had the three 10 V10s, and again, they cleared all the 11s. Uh, they could still definitely improve on that, especially as we get closer and closer uh, to playoffs. But 6 and 8, still not bad. Uh, their Town Hall 9s also did pretty good, uh, hitting at 58%. So they did have quite a few scouts on uh, GK's Town Hall 10s, which ensured them a, a higher chance uh, getting a successful attack off, and that's exactly what happened. Again, they put up three 10v10 triples. Uh, Gotoborg's Krieg was not able to get a 10v10 triple this war. They have been a little uh, hot and cold kind of throughout the league, or uh, throughout the uh, the entire league, what seems like. Uh, a couple wars, they won't put up any 10v10s. Uh, they'll have some dip fills. The next war, they're going to get quite a few 10v10s. And they have taken down some pretty big clans uh, here in Premier. Uh, but didn't get any 10v10s. They did leave one Town Hall 11, only one star. They went three for 10. They also had three dip fails. And their Town Hall 9s hit at 40%. So definitely an off war for them. But they are still in the playoff hunt. Uh, so best of luck to them going in into uh, week 11 must war win uh, for go to Borks Creek uh, on their hands okay guys we have gunma samurai who took on none other 
then Gehazi Bomber 2, uh, Japanese versus the Japanese here. Uh, we have some fellow countrymen who took on each other here in week 10. Gunma Samurai getting a two-star victory uh, over Gehazi Bomber 2, the final 85 to 83. And both clans put up some pretty solid numbers as we go ahead and go through them real quick. Uh, the only 10v10 of the war, however, is the one you guys are watching on your screen right now. However, uh, like I said, both these clans being Japanese, both clans having very similar stats. Uh, 10v11, both of them hit at 4 for 12. Uh, so both clans managed uh, to double uh, all Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s. So look very, very good in that department. Uh, Gunma Samurai went 100% on their dips. They had the edge, uh, seeing as Gahazi Bomber 2 went 7 for 8. So it was still very, very close. Uh, Gunma Samurai's Town Hall 9s hit at 55%. Gahazi Bomber 2s hit at 67%. So that right there, guys, is what made up the two-star difference. Gahazi Bomber 2 didn't have a 10v10. Gunma Samurai did. Uh, and uh, Gahazi Bomber 2 having one dip fill. Uh, Gunma Samurai not having any. Now, although uh, Gunma Samurai is not a huge 10v10 clan, where they have always, where they always seem to perform is on their dips. Uh, they've been very, very solid, hitting way above the league average, and they did the same thing here in week 10, uh, hitting at 100%. Best of luck to both of these clans going into week 11. Okay. Next up, guys, we have King Jeffrey, who took on Valar Mogulis. KJ getting a two-star victory, the final to this war, 82 to 80. And again, KJ putting up very solid numbers. They've been very consistent. Uh, I think they've only had one war so far out of 10 where they kind of flopped. But other than that, the other nine wars that they have... Uh, shown up for here in Premier have been solid. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, KJ, uh, you're looking at their one 10v10 triple that they had. They did, they did go one for seven. Uh, their 10v11s, uh, they went three for 13. So they weren't able uh, to clear uh, all Valar Magulis' Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s. They did leave w one of them one starred, uh, but they did, they did have that 10v10 triple. And they did go seven for eight. Uh, on their dips, only having one dip fill, and they still hit at a solid 57% uh, for their Town Hall 9s, so that did ensure them a few scouts on the Town Hall 10s. Vlar uh the last couple weeks, they've been putting up 3, 4, 5, 10 v 10 triples uh, the last few wars. Uh, they definitely struggle with KJ's bases. Uh, they only managed one 10 v 10 uh, this war, uh, similar to KJ, where they struggled was in the 10v11 department and on their dip. So for 10v11, they went two for seven. Uh, so definitely have to improve there in the off season. Again, uh, VM will not be going to the playoffs, uh, but they do have some things they can work on. They are a very, very solid clan and always in high spirits as well. On their dips, they went four for six. So clearly have to uh, improve there. They had two dip fails and six attempts. The other two Town Hall 11s uh, went to clean up after, I guess you could say, the, the 10v11 game. Uh, so 10v11s improve. They can get those dips nailed down. Their nines hit at 54%. It was still a very close war, 82 to 80. And it was a 4-11-15 breakdown. So still a little bit heavier uh, than the Premier default. Uh, but again, KJ is going to the playoffs. Best of luck to Vlarmogulis going in the future. All right, guys. Uh, next war we're going to be covering is the Varhai Seleke versus Above and Beyond War. And this was the... He I mean, it seems Varhai Seleke has put up uh, more 40 before. They have a very, very thick roster uh, where they've been able, they've pretty much been able to manage a 40 v 40 war whenever the opponent clan agrees to it. Above and beyond did. Uh, the breakdown was 5, 15, 20. So in pretty heavy for Premier, uh, those numbers are almost at invite level. Uh, but Valarmo, or excuse me, uh, Varhai Seleke did go ahead and get the victory. Again, the final. 109 to 109 of uh, Rahai Seleke winning uh, by just under 1%. was very, very close. Uh, they did put up a solid 210v10s, and they managed to clear all of Above and Beyond's Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s. Uh, they did go 5 for 11 there. Uh, 
and they went, uh, uh, they did have three dip fills. Uh, they went seven for 10. Uh, so not sure what happened there. Again, they did spin a few more or, or one more 11 uh, than many are used to here in Premier. Uh, but still very, very solid, and their nines hit at 59%. Above and beyond, where they outshined uh, for High Seleke was in the 10v10 department, where they've been looking very solid uh, pretty much throughout the league so far. Uh, they did put up four 10v10 triples. Uh, where for High Seleke outshined them was in the 10v11 game. Uh, they were only able to, they, their 10s only managed to clear two out of the five Town Hall 11s that were on the war map. Uh, they did do a little bit better on their dips. They went seven for nine. They did have a few more 11 v 11 attempts. Uh, uh, again, going uh, going seven for nine. Uh, so yeah, so they did have a couple dip fails. One of their Town Hall 11 hits uh, did try uh, for 11 v 11, v 11 attempt, uh, but was still very, very close. And their Town Hall 9s hit at 71%, which did help them uh, help out their Town Hall 10s as they did put up four 10 v 10 triples. But for Heist Lake, a, it was a very, very close war, but they did get the victory on percentage. It's looking like both these clans are going to be going to the playoffs. Uh, best of luck to them uh, for their wars in week 11. All right, guys. Uh, next up, we have Grumpy Old Men who took on from Molten Lava. Uh, Grumpy Old Men getting the victory, the final to this war, guys, 86 to 82. Uh, so Grumpy Old Men getting a solid four-star victory, and they put up an incredible performance against from Molten Lava. Uh, the breakdown to this war was 4-11-15. So again, they did have one more uh, Town Hall 10 that was spun a little heavier than the uh, traditional 4-10-16 uh, breakdown. Uh, but we have Grumpy Old Man who put up a solid 4 10 v 10 triples. And two of these 10 v 10s, guys, happened in the first uh, couple hours of war. Uh, so definitely put a lot of pressure on From Mont Lava from the get-go. And they also uh, hit it 50% on their 10 v 11 game, hitting it 4. Uh, they, they did manage... Uh, the stats were four for eight. So very, very tough. Uh, they looked very solid on their 10v10s, getting four of them. And they cleared all of FML's Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s and only did it in eight tries. Again, put a lot of pressure on FML from the get-go. And they did go 100% on their dips. Uh, they went seven for seven. Uh, because they cleared all the Town Hall 10s on the map, they even were able to get an 11v11 attempt. Uh, so, and their, and their town of nines hit at 74%. So from, from top to bottom, uh, they put up a very, very solid war against from Molten Lava. Uh, FML did have one 10 V 10, uh, but very, very tough, you know, when Grumpy Old Men puts up four, but FML did manage to eke out one 10 V 10 triple where they really struggled was yet again in the 10 V 11 game. They went two for 14. So definitely have to tighten that up, especially with a must win war on FML's hands. However, they did go 100% on their dips going eight for eight. Uh, so still looking solid, just have to figure out what's going on in the 10 v 11 game. Uh, but again, best of luck to From Mont Lava in week 11, a must win war if they want to make it to the playoffs. Okay, guys, I uh, have a few more wars that we're going to be covering here. We have FYSB who took on Nottingham. FYSB, uh, like I said in the start of the video, they have been looking very, very solid as they were a little shaky, kind of beginning slash middle part of the season. Uh, but they have definitely put that in the past. They have been looking solid what seems to be week after week after week. And uh, week 10 was no exception to that. Uh, they put up a solid 310v10 triples. Uh, they were able to clear all of Nottingham's uh, Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10s. Uh, they did go 4 for 9 there, so hit just under 50%. And they went 7 for 8 on their dips, only having one dip fail. Uh, where they really, really performed was in the Town Hall 9 department, hitting at 80%. Think about that, guys. Uh, they were able to scout every single one of Nottingham's uh, Town Hall 10s uh, with their Town Hall 9s. Uh, which did help them out. Again, they did get three 10 v 10 triples this war. Uh, so you want to talk about scouts, FYSB had 
plenty of them in this war. Uh, Nottingham, unfortunately, did not have a 10v10 triple. Uh, they went 3 for 12 on their 10v on their 10v11 game so they did leave one of the town hall 11s uh did skate away from their uh from their town hall 10s uh they did have one ditfo going six for seven uh that other town hall 11 uh was able to get that other uh town hall 11 doubled uh but that that that's one less star that they were able to put on the map as they would have just gone ahead and dipped to town hall 10 uh, but I mean, it was still very, very close. Uh, their town hall nines hit at 50%. So without a doubt, FYSB definitely outshine them in pretty much every single category. Again, the final 86 to 81, a solid five star victory for FYSB. They are also going to be going to the playoffs. And Nottingham also has a high possibility of making it to the playoffs. Again, uh, very, very competitive in the in the minor division, uh, but Nottingham does have a chance to make it there. Okay, guys, next up we have Assassin's Core who took on DLX. Uh, Assassin's Core w w won't be going to the playoffs, uh, but DLX does still have a chance to make it there. I definitely wanted to highlight this war, uh, seeing as Assassin's Core, uh, ha they were struggling earlier on in the season and middle of the season. But it seems these last few weeks, they have been putting up much more solid numbers as they did to start off uh, the beginning and middle of the season. Uh, no difference here. Assassin's Core guys, uh, not only did they beat Dark Looter X, but they did it in style, uh, a four-star victory over DLX. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with DLX. I mean, sometimes it seems like uh, DLX will completely smoke a clan, put up 87 stars on the map, and then they show up and then have a war like this. Not exactly sure what is going on over there. We'll go ahead and break down the stats real quick. Assassin score uh, had two 10v10 triples, as did DLX. Uh, we know DLX is able to put up 10v10 triples. Uh, where they are always seeming to struggle is in the 10v11 game. Uh, Assassin's Core hit it 50%. They went 4 for 8. Uh, DLX went 2 for 11. Uh, so it seems, uh, like we've mentioned before, they're very top-heavy uh, with their 10v10 guys. They need some of those 10v10 guys to start taking on that 10v11 role uh, to get these Town Hall 11s doubled with their Town Hall 10s. Uh, as far as their the dips, Assassin's Core went 7 for 8, only having one dip fill. DLX went 5 for 7, having uh, two dip fills. One of those Town Hall 11s did get eaten up for a 11 v 11 attempt. Uh, so again, not sure what happened there. Uh, but DLX, despite losing this war to Assassin's Core, Assassin's Core kind of playing spoiler here, uh, but DLX does have a must-war win uh, on their hands. I mean, they still have a good record on the season, uh, but they still need to take that victory in Week 11, but they do still have a, a solid chance of making it to the playoffs. Okay, guys, next up we have Swarm Synergy. No, that's the next one. Next up we have... Uh, one Hive Genesis and Emphatic Fury in what was a very, very close war. Uh, it seems like the wars that OHG are in always seem to be so competitive. Uh, this one was no different. Uh, OHG taking the victory 84 to 83. So OHG getting a one star victory and they were able to bounce back after taking a loss back in week nine. And uh, their playoff berth is looking very, very promising. Uh, they are currently 6-4 and four on the season. Uh, again, we'll go ahead and break down the stats for you guys. OHG, uh, back to their ways in these two categories. They did put up a 10v10 triple this war. Uh, and that's what you guys are watching at on your screen right now. And they went 4 for 10 on their 10v11 game. That's one thing that they have been constantly uh, consistent with is their 10v11 game. Uh, week 10 was no different. Again, going 4 for 10, very, very solid. Uh, on their dips, they went 7 for 8, only having one dip fail. Uh, they've also been, they've also throughout the season looked very, very solid on their dips. And their town hall lines hit at a remarkable 70%, ensuring them all kinds of scouts on Emphatic Fury's town hall 10s. Uh, Emphatic Fury also has been looking very solid here these last few weeks. Uh, this war, again, was no exception. Uh, they actually outshined OHG in the 10v10 game. Uh, they had three 10v10 triples. Uh, the two categories, 
where they were outperformed was in the 10 to 11 game and on the dips. Uh, so they, their Town Hall 10s went three for 12 on the hit ups. Uh, and they had two dip fails, only going five for seven. Uh, but what's amazing is both of these clans hit at exactly 70% uh, on their Town Hall 9s. Again, ensuring Emphatic Fury, uh, quite a few scouts as well that their Town Hall 10s took advantage of. Uh, but again, best of luck to both of these clans going into week 11. All right, guys, this is going to be the final matchup that we're going to be highlighting. You know we got to bring you guys some Swarm Synergy action, as this is by far, uh, next to Gunma Samurai, Swarm Synergy is probably the hottest clan right now in Premier. Uh, this war was no different, uh, despite some of their numbers. This is what I'm talking about, and this is why I wanted to highlight this war uh, right here. Uh, Swarm Synergy, week after week after week, putting up 10 V10s. Again, no exception here in week 10. They had four 10 V10 triples. Uh, what was kind of not the norm for them was their hit-ups. Uh, they went three for 11. Uh, so they did have uh, one of those 11s, only one star. They did go for an 11 11 attempt, ending in a two star. Uh, however, their dips, this is what was really uh, puzzling here. They went three for seven on their dips. Again, not sure what happened, but they did have four dip fails. Uh, I'm sure it's something that they're able to bounce back from, uh, but that was the first time that they've done that uh, throughout the entire season. Again, having four dip fails, their nines hit at 62%. COC Hogwarts did not have a 10v10 triple. Uh, they definitely struggled on the hit-ups, guys. Uh, only managing to clear one of Swarm Synergy's Town Hall 11s with their Town Hall 10. So Swarm Synergy having very, very tough bases, uh, which seems to be throughout. A lot of clans seem to struggle with Swarm Synergy's Town Hall 11s on these hit-ups. However, uh, COC Hogwarts, where they looked very, very impressive, was on their dips. They hit at 100%. Uh, their Town Hall 9s only hitting at 37%. Uh, so very, very tough throughout most of those categories, but they did go 100% on their dips. And the final, 82 to 81, again with those four dip fills, but Swarm Synergy clearly going to the playoffs. And that is going to do it. Let's go ahead and check out the playoff projections. All right, guys, before we go ahead and wrap up the video, we're going to go ahead and take a quick look at the current playoff picture slash playoff projections, starting off with the top eight clans leading in each of their divisions. Again, starting off at the top, we have Swarm Synergy, Gunma Samurai, Forbidden, for High Seleke, King Jeffrey, FYSB, Bad Intentions, and Above and Beyond, all in first place in their respectable divisions. Now, where the wild card slots are is Grumpy Old Men, One Hive Genesis, CWC Brawlers, Dark Avengers, Nottingham, Dark Looter X, From Molten Lava, and Dragon Rejects. Like I said, it is very, very competitive, especially down there towards the bottom. Uh, there are four other clans that are also sitting at five and five right now. That's Power COC, Emphatic Fury, Art of War and Gotoborg's Krieger all have must-win wars on their hands for Week 11. Uh, like I said, it is getting very, very competitive here towards the very end. I cannot wait to see how it ends. Definitely stay tuned to the channel uh, to, for more CWL action coming your guys' way. Week 11 is going down this weekend. The final war... Uh, or the final wars in the regular season here in CWL Premier Season 3. Definitely stay tuned. If you guys like the video, make sure you like it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And of course, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, this is Riggs from Clashing FFS, and I'll see you in the very next video.